Hello YouTube, James Green, Short Series Shenanigans. So this is going to be episode 3 in reference to the extension that we're building for the uh, drill press for a viewer. So, what we've got, and I went ahead and did some stuff ahead of time and I'll talk you through it just so we can make the video go faster. So, <clears throat> we've already completed the tube and you saw in the last video, we got the other end, it's to size, it's the same dimension as that other one except it's longer, obviously. So, uh, we have the base here because we're going to recreate the bottom. All right. And we're gonna recreate this. All right. We have a piece of square aluminum. Why? Because it was in the drop bin and it was already cut and it's approximately one inch thick. So what I did is we got it in the four jaw. Uh, the reason we went ahead and put it in the four jaw is it was square. <laughs> We are going to turn it round, but I'll show you that later. Anyway, so to make things easier for camera viewing, and I'll talk you through it on how to, because we're going to end up cutting this round anyway, so we just found basic center. What I did was, and I'll just walk you guys through it real quick. Uh, this is real simple to do. Get you some layout fluid, and you guys can see I just went from corner to corner, found center, okay, and the easiest way to line it up, actually, and I've already pulled it out, let me go ahead and put it back in here, is what I did was, okay, we put our live center in, and we just brought our live center up, okay, and all I did is I just rotated this and adjusted the fore jaw around until it lined up with the center. Again, it doesn't have to be super to the tenth or thou or whatever, it just because this is going to get machined down, so we're generally in the center of it. So that's how we found center of our material. Again, walked you through it real quick, real simple. <clears throat> and so what we're going to do, because we know we're already centered, and I know this this is a bandsaw cut that's on here. Okay, it's a bandsaw cut. We know it's not straight. <clears throat> Before we start drilling holes and we end up with interrupted cut, let's just go ahead right now. <clears throat> we're going to set up and we're going to face it off. And so the tool that I think I want to use is, let's see, where did I put it? Up here. Okay, so we're going to use the same one we were using that had our nice finish on it. And I misspoke in the other one. I said this was like a 322. It's actually a 222. It's a 200 series insert. has a positive rake. And uh, it works really good. Like I said, you can get the tool holder itself. Uh, you can use a carbide insert as long as it has a positive rake which this tool holder does. Okay, I've showed that part number before. And I picked this up at Shars. Okay, um, that's where I got it from. It works great. 222 series inserts, 221, one is sharper, two is rounded, three is even really rounded. So this is a 222 TPG, TPU, something like that. Uh, insert, and it's already got a, not only does it have a positive rake, because uh, these inserts also get used in a boring bar I have, but they also work great, I've found out, on aluminum. There's no coating, it's just a regular carbide. You guys saw the finish that it put on the piece of pipe. Um, excellent, excellent, excellent. So I've always had good luck with this as far as using an insert on aluminum. It works great on the non-ferrous metals because, again, it ha as long as your tool holder has a positive rake, they work great. So you don't have to necessarily use stainless steel. If you guys want to venture into and invest in a, like one of your first, what I would say is, you know, there's, again, you can get those at Shars. There's the part number. It's a half inch tool bit. The inserts are real common out there. Um, there's a myriad of them. Like I said, whether they have a hole in the middle or not like these do, I have some little spacer and some little flat ones I put up underneath to take up the gap. They work fine. Again, it's a half inch tool if you're just starting out. And this is a BXA tool holder, so uh, it'll work in AXA and 0XA. And especially if you guys have a 7x lay, they're a small bench top like, like my old Grizzly G0602. They work great in that. So that would be a good first investment to start off with as far as some insert tooling. <clears throat> so we've done a little bit of cleanup, emptied the uh, chip tray out. Let me go back this other way so it's not in the way. There. Um, and I know I need to turn. I'll go ahead and move you guys here and set you back just a little bit over there. All right. So you guys can see what's going on there. All right. Yeah, we kind of did some cleanup. We emptied the chip tray, make sure our flood coolant and everything was doing good. 
and we just want to have it to where our tool is a little bit back from this. And the other thing, we need to make sure, because we're way out here on a large piece, or e-stop in, throw everything in neutral. Okay, here's the other thing. We're not quite back far enough, so we need to loosen this. We can slide back just a little on the compound here. That's another reason, if you guys have seen and uh, Double Boost, you guys go check his channel out. Uh, he's the one that, you know, kind of started the trend of everyone putting one on. I put the long handle. I've had people ask me, why do you have a long handle on here? Why isn't it short? Leverage. For those of you that don't know, I've had my right arm rebuilt. So anytime I can get leverage and make it easier, trust me, it is. And uh, I like them, you know. And one thing I did, just so it's so you don't grab it, and I, I left this one hex and this one round. Um, so that's, I've had people ask, why don't you shorten those handles up? They're too long. Well, I like having the leverage, and it makes it easier. Especially when you get older, you, you lose your grip, or you don't have good control of things. Use leverage to your advantage. So uh, we'll be able to clear everything here out on the corners. Make sure everything's going to clear. Okay, looks good. We've already tapped everything in, and we know we've milled the flat side. This side, we know it's going to be machine cut. I'll just go ahead and uh, we'll quit talking, and we'll pull out our WD-40. WD for those of you who don't know, WD-40 works great for working on aluminum, and we'll go ahead and get started. We'll just do a little few spritzes, and we're going to run, let's run 755. this first one in just so I know kind of where the high spots are and where they disappear. We'll call that zero actually. We'll call that zero. And what I like to do on interrupted cuts is I lock the carriage in. We're gonna go ahead and move over just a little bit. So you guys can see let me zoom you in just a little bit. Okay. All right. Okay, we'll call it a 15 thousandths. Lock the carriage and feed it across. Again, we know this is a band saw cut and uh, we got a lot to clean up. I'll move you down here where you guys can get a good view of the uh, the cut. We're just letting it feed in, getting a good finish there, wherever it is cutting. Nice. Real short, curly cues, which is what we want. We're not getting those long stringy cuts, which is real good. We're actually going to drill and bore this thing using the coolant fed setup. But first, we've got to get the front of this flat. Probably, I imagine, one more cut after this will probably work. You can see how far out. So 15 thousandths just left us with uh, one side, you can see. So we're going to feed in another 15 from where we were. Just a little spritz.
little aluminum. Again, those little aluminum chips from we we're doing that long cut. We had one of them get caught right down there. My lever wouldn't engage. There's the culprit. There we go. All right. Let's try this again. So now we're taking a total of 30 thou off the face there. I'll leave you guys back at a distance so you can watch back there. enjoyed that uh, tool. It really does really, really, really well, especially with those inserts. Now, you do get into stuff like this, and that's just the nature of it, because it doesn't have a chip breaker. Even though it has a positive break, that's when you get your hook out. Disengage everything, shut her down, just so we don't have a mishap. There we go, get it out, start it back up, and re engage. That's going to work for what we need. Again, we're going to have one inch, 850 foul hole running through there, so all that from there on is literally going to disappear. We'll go ahead and take it to center just because. Now, I'm not too concerned about this out here, even though we have that, okay? We might, let's do a quick check. If we don't have to do another pass to get rid of that, because our diameter here, let's slide this back out of the way, um, is actually gonna be here. And let's see if we're gonna clear, if we go center, yeah. we're. I was trying to see if when I cut that off, but we're still, we're gonna have to make one more pass to get rid of that mess right there. So, all right, one more pass it is. We were at 30, now we're gonna go to 45. Again, this is a very light 200 series insert, and I know for best results, don't go deeper than 15 thousandths on a cut, and uh, you get a really, really good finish. Making real nice, small, curly cues. You know, not long, stringy. And now once we get to the center, where there's no interrupted cut, then you make the long stringy. That, then you have to contend with that. That will have a chip hook. Stop. We'll come in here just because I know it's bird nesting around the back of this. We'll pull that out. Alright. And we actually got rid of what we needed to, so we'll go ahead. This will be the last cut. Yeah, see? Got to 
contend with it. we can stop there because all that's going to be dis disappearing. We'll go ahead and pull this stuff out of the way. So there's no sense in going all the way across center because that's going to be all drilled out. We'll go ahead and take this out. We're done with that. Set it out of the way. Do a quick wipe down here. All right. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to be drilling. We'll go ahead and get us a center drill and we'll try to get as much done here. I'm going to show you guys the setup. Okay. Uh, first, we're going to center drill and we're going to step up through again because one inch 850 thou. Let's see, center drill. Where it is? There it is. Hiding up here. All right. Got our big center drill, half inch. Got our big number five in here. Oh. I hadn't seated the uh, drill chuck in yet. There we go. All right, and I'm going to show you the setup, and we'll drill with the coolant fed setup. But we're going to step it into the project. Drop her down to 115, which we just go straight over the low. just a large bit here this is uh, 15 30 seconds nothing critical it was just it was what first thing I grabbed out of the box there it's got a good tip on it we're just going to slide in here and get us a starter hole actually I'm go ahead because we're only drilling an inch deep so we're not doing any deep hole drilling 50 40. through real easy. Alright, there we go. Nothing fancy. Alright. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and step up because the way this bit is designed Um, you need to have at least a certain diameter and I don't know all the specifics on it I'd have to look it up for those of you the guys that use these in the industry you know what I'm talking about but you've got to have a certain size center hole started and I would imagine it's probably larger than these two so we need to start off with at least a a three-quarter inch hole larger than okay we'll get us through uh, the center there or actually we could do like a half inch actually which is pretty close but again we're aluminum and I haven't used this before I don't know how it's going to perform in aluminum you know it's designed to be running a big piece of CNC equipment so it might work great in aluminum or it might fail miserably I haven't used it yet and so all right so let's, we're going to go ahead and step up with a silver indemnity. Let's just go straight to a uh, three-quarter bit. Actually, let's just go ahead and go up to a, yeah, we'll go three-quarter. Let's go up to a straight shank three-quarter here. Again, we're not doing a lot of deep hole drilling, but we're going to get large. And once we run that big bit, then we're going to use the boring head, or boring bar, I'm sorry, excuse me.
box. And close the box. Okay. I do not know how this is going to perform, so you guys are going to see it live with me. Um, it might work great. It might fail miserably. Again, it's aluminum. We're running some inserts. We're going to run a toolbar. Uh, tool holder that we made for this big coolant fed bit so you guys guess as good as mine how it's going to run like I said first time on camera so first we'll go ahead and we'll put the uh, tool holder on and we're going to line everything up and get it all straight okay now I know it's not straight here we're gonna we'll work on getting everything lined up actually what we need to do is before we put this on let's make sure this is square with our workpiece and there's a simple way to do that. So just come up here. Slide that back over in the middle there. All right. And because we've machined this flat, I can come up here. Rotate that just a little bit. And we are square. Okay. So we are now square with the world. Okay. Make sure we don't have anything underneath there. All right. So the next thing we're going to do um, on this bit, uh, because you can actually use it as a boring bar, you can use, and we might do that depending on how well it performs, and just use this to fin get our hole out to size. But we're going to have this side toward us. Okay. And go back even more here. Lock that down for right now. Now we've got to tighten these in. Okay. All right. Those are our three sixteenths. All right. And we'll lock those in. Actually, we might do this in, in the other video. I don't know if we have enough time to get this done. But we'll get it set up in this one. I'll show you the setup for it. Okay, we're in. And the next thing, we've got our coolant hose here. Again, <coughs> this is actually designed to have, you know, a lot of coolant through it. And the through hole in here is only 3 eighths, or correction, uh, quarter inch. So we don't need torrents of flood coolant, but we are going to, again, we're just, I want to see how it works. And before I go, this was the first thing I had that popped up that was a practical application of what I had going on. And we just slide this on here. So figured might as well, let's see. And I don't expect great results since it is aluminum, but I just do want to see. You know, it might fail miserably, and we may have to switch back over to, uh, there we go, to a high-speed steel and do it the old-fashioned way. So, uh, but it was a chance to let's see how this performs. So, uh, let's do a coolant check real quick with the pump. Make sure we got flood coolant. We got flood coolant. All right, one of the other things we need to do is we need to get our tool height. Because we gotta be, and this isn't super critical because we're gonna create our own dimension or whatever even after this, but we do gotta get our correct tool height. So, one way you can do it is, and I, I had to think about this, about how to figure the tool height to get this set up. Let me go ahead and, it's gonna involve Again, there's a different way to do things, different tool. Let's put our tailstock center in and let's figure so that we know how could we do this. There's always a different way to do things. So our height, we know. Let's get us a, we're gonna need a piece. It's gonna be neat. six inches work. Yeah, six inches will work. I need a parallel. Okay. Actually, I ground one out the other day. We'll use it. Let me grab it real quick. And 
Okay. All right. Old vice jaw. And uh, we just dressed it up, nothing super fancy. Again, that's from out of my old vise. We'll use that and we'll set it on the, uh, the ways over here. So what we'll do is we'll use that to measure our height to our center is four inch Actually, I'm going to rotate it the other way. Get a better reading. Four inch and thirty, and I'm looking on the sixty-four. So, four inch and thirty-two sixty-fours. Four inch, thirty-two sixty-fours. Let me move you guys over here. And we'll set the center. Okay. All right. So that's what we were doing. We were measuring from there up. Okay. We'll just move this over here. Wipe our top of our ways off. Again, these have been I I reground these on all sides, just so I know they're square. Yes, they've got imperfections, but I'm not worried about. For things just like this doing setup so we know four and 32 60 fourths is our tool height and this is going to be interesting to set up because I need to I got to think about this afterwards I should have installed an adjustment and I will have to go back and retrofit one uh, an adjustment deal just like what's on the other ones so we're not too low we're actually right there we're at four 24 64 so we don't have to come up a whole heck of a lot but to do this one-handed is going to be huh look at there go down just a hair I almost got it right right off the bat okay Thirty-two sixty-fourths, boom, right there, and that's with the flat. So we'll call that. That's our tool height. That's all for this video. Thank you to all Industrial Tool Supply for being our channel sponsor. You guys go on, check them out. www.allindustrial.com, and we're going to have video number four. We're going to set up and we're going to drill through this. We'll see how it works. Take care of yourself and take care of your family because remember, at the end of the day, you and your family is all you got. Until next time, get out in the garage and make some chips. This stuff is fun. See you in a bit. Bye-bye.